I'm Tom Cheatham. I'm a family physician. And I want to talk to you today briefly about a medical encounter. More, more specifically, the information that a physician or other practitioner needs to make diagnoses. That's my job, to make diagnoses. And treatment, at least treatment options, pretty much flow from the diagnosis. So what do I need to make diagnoses? There are only three sources of information possible. And you're probably aware of this from any healthcare encounter you've had uh, personally. I can take a history, I can do a physical examination, and I can do tests. Those three components have to give me all the information I need to make diagnoses. So the history, that's what brought you in today, what problems are you having, um, tell me all about it, what health issues have you had in the past, any medications you're on, allergies, times you've been in hospital. It also includes family history, you know, diseases that run in the, f the family, that sort of thing. So all of that's history. Then I can examine a person. Often that's a limited examination um, in terms of what hypotheses I have from, from the history. Sometimes it's a complete examination, a more extensive exam. And then the third component is to do tests. And this can range from simple blood tests or urine test to x-rays, to more expensive, more involved tests, MRI, um, CT scans, uh, uh, a variety of things, uh, some of which can be costly and uncomfortable for the person. So that's it. That's my database for making a diagnosis. So now I, I have one question for you. What do you think the proportion of information comes from each of those? History, physical examination, and tests or investigations. How do they divide up, do you think? So what percentage of the information I need comes from the history? What percentage of information comes from physical examination? What percentage comes from investigations. And let's just assume it doesn't matter what the investigations cost or how uncomfortable they are for you. For the moment, we'll just ignore that. So give me, think about three figures that add up to 100% that gives me a sense of how you believe the information is apportioned. And the reason I'm sharing this is Research is scant, but, and none of it's been in people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. But what people rarely uh, realize is about 75 or 80 percent of the information I need comes from history, from what the person tells me. Physical examination and investigations are about equal of the remaining, or remaining 25 or 20 percent. You understand for, with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, at least for some people, there's a challenge in terms of the history at least needs to be supplemented by a family member, a direct support professional, someone else who can ensure that that history is complete. So remember this, both for yourself and your family and the people we support when you go to see a healthcare provider, that that history, the more organized, the more accurate, the more complete it is, the better the information on which a diagnosis is made. Thank you very much.